now we will call our friend from Hong Kong, uh, Benjamin Wong. He is the head of uh, transport and industrial sectors of Invest Hong Kong. He is going to take us into the Asian part now of our forum, and he will talk to us. It's an update on One Belt, One Road. Benjamin, thank you. Another great friend. He's been traveling with us around the world, so thank you for coming to Greece. If I may, we have your... We have the clock, so thank you. Yes. Thanks. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> Apologies for my voice, a bit of uh, sore throat. Uh, my first time here uh, in Athens, um, outside of Posidonia for a conference. So it's great to be here. Um, and uh, now uh, my presentation here today would be about Hong Kong. Um, and I think there are a lot of uh, commonality between um, Greece and also Chinese, um, you know, culture-wise, food-wise. Um, now, sorry, thank you. Now, um, Belt and Road, <clears throat> actually this presentation will be mainly be two parts. One is on Belt and Road, um, which you have heard many, many times already, I think. Uh, and then the other part is on Greater Bay Area. Now, Belt and Road, actually, I will not be going through the statistics again, you know, the number of countries and number of people. Um, obviously, it covers uh, two-thirds of the world, and it's a very big uh, blueprint um, for the um, development which um, China, uh, China is trying to uh, initiate and propose. Uh, and this development, obviously, is with uh, over uh, 70 countries, so actually is very ambitious and uh, very difficult, uh, very long-term. I think uh, it's going to be not only decades, but also century long, because um, uh, when you're talking about cooperations, um, even 70 people will take a long time, not to mention uh, 70 countries. Now, um, I would like to go directly into uh, some projects uh, of the Belt and Road, because uh, obviously we, uh, it's a very packed conference, um, so we need to make good use of the time. Now, uh, one signature uh, project of the Belt and Road, of course, is the uh, Costco investment in the Piraeus uh, ports. Now, uh, because I think there were quite a bit of skepticism uh, about the Belt and Road initiative um, that uh, is only for China, you know, uh, to, to, um, to uh, make use of its uh, excess capacity and all that. Uh, but I think um, the, this uh, Piraeus project um, actually is a very good example showing that uh, it's actually mutually beneficial. Now, uh, now actually, um, Costco, of course, um, when they have started the project, there were uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, different issues and difficulties. And I think it's quite natural, uh, because initially, I think um, there were worries that um, it's actually here to take away jobs um, and to make use of the resources and the market. But then over the time, I think actually it has proven itself that it brings in the investments it also brings in the technology for the ports, and also it brings in um, the uh, port management uh, expertise. And most important of all, it brings in the cargo volume. Now, uh, this port is actually number two uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, so actually is a very substantial uh, 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 growth and enhancement uh, to the ports. So I think um, this is one signature project. And then on, for the others, actually, you can see that it's different thing for different places, different countries. Uh, but I think uh, one thing you can see in commonality is uh, one is um, mainly on infrastructures and energy. And the other one is um, it is in a lot of countries which um, the credit rating and things actually is quite difficult. So that's why actually uh, I think it's important to look at this um, to, uh, in terms of how to manage the risk. And I think um, insurance is uh, for sure one way to look at it. Um, for, of course, I mean, um, China, it has a lot of uh, very big insurance companies, uh, but then for projects for Belt and Road, actually so big, um, so far away that actually um, they need also uh, not only their own insurance companies, but also outside help. Uh, now, one thing which is uh, reinsurance. Now, for the um, Chinese uh, insurer, when they um, place, overseas, place the risk uh, to the overseas market for reinsurance, uh, now, uh, it used to be like that um, overseas market uh, reinsurers, um, they are the same like uh, Hong Kong. So um, there will be extra uh, reserve or guarantee needed because uh, to the um, Chinese government and companies that um, they do not really know about the background of the insurers uh, that much overseas. 
But now actually started uh, last year, uh, we are now able to create another tier, uh, which is the Hong Kong tier. That when you, uh, when they, the Chinese insurers, when they place overseas uh, re reinsurance, um, then actually um, they can make use of Hong Kong. Hong Kong will be treated more or less the same as a mainland Chinese um, uh, reinsurer. So for that, um, the uh, amount of uh, reserve or guarantee you have to put aside for those projects, for those risks, actually will be reduced. And it's a very important step because, because it applies not only to projects, for example, Belt and Road, which has a lot of default risk or um, uh, uh, political risk, but also <laughs> apply to other reinsurance. So actually is one very important element that we are seeing now. Um, this is the second part, uh, Greater Bay Area. Now, uh, I would like to put this together because when you look at um, Belt and Road is so big, um, then no matter how big your city is, but on Belt and Road, you're only one small dot. But then this is a concept which we are grouping together these 11 cities and put them together. And in the context of Belt and Road, then it means that we are no longer just one small dot. We are a much bigger uh, block on the Belt and Road. Now, how big uh, it is. Now, uh, if you look at the GDP, it's 1.5 trillion US dollars. So it's about 10% of um, China's GDP. Uh, out of this 10%, um, uh, Hong Kong's contribution is about 25% um, of this um, 1.5 trillion. Um, now, uh, for this, actually, we will be able to um, make a much bigger impact, not only for the uh, Belt and Road, but also for other business opportunities. Um, this shows you how these 11 cities are being positioned itself. Hong Kong, of course, uh, we are very strong on finance and transportation, uh, business and professional services, and technology. Uh, but then when you're talking about technology, we've got an even stronger neighbor uh, right next door, Shenzhen. So you've got Tencent and Huawei, all the big tech giants, they're based over there. So they have nurtured a lot of uh, very strong uh, tech uh, talents. And of course, uh, the point over here is that all these 11 cities, uh, we've got uh, different capabilities. Some of them, they may not be actually um, in the capability of certain segments, but rather, for example, if you look at uh, Huizhou, uh, which is in the middle, uh, you can see that the GDP per capita, uh, or Zhao Ting, sorry, uh, the last one, the GDP uh, actually is the smallest. And then uh, if you look at the per capita, there are a few cities which they are very low on GDP per capita. So it means that um, those places would be fantastic for manufacturing. Now, uh, we compare this Bay Area with the other few Bay Areas around the world, uh, San Francisco, New York, Tokyo. Uh, you can see that actually uh, in terms of population, uh, actually, uh, or let's say population, yes. Of course, uh, everybody knows that China, we have a lot of people. And uh, of course, that's the biggest one. But then actually also, if you look at other uh, measures, mm -hmm. Uh, we think we have a very comprehensive uh, service offering over here. Now, in terms of uh, GDP, of course, uh, we are actually, uh, uh, the growth of GDP actually was 7% comparing to others, uh, like San Francisco 5.3, New York 0.9, Tokyo Bay 1.9. You can see the growth trend is actually very strong. Uh, per capita GDP, actually, we are kind of like in the low range. And I think it shows you the potential of it um, to grow. Because as I mentioned, um, uh, there are very low GDP areas over there in the 11 cities. Uh, whereas Hong Kong, we are kind of like in middle. Uh, whereas um, Macau, actually, they have the highest one because of their very small population and their gaming revenue. Uh, for, for those you do not know, um, Macau, actually, the gaming revenue actually is now exceeded uh, Las Vegas. So they are the biggest uh, gaming revenue city around the world. Um, and then, of course, if you look at also other measures, Air cargo, we are number one. Container throughput, we are number seven. Uh, and within the area, actually, we have three of the top 10 container ports uh, in this area. We've got um, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and also Guangzhou. And then uh, if you look at other measures, for example, um, the uh, stock market. Actually, we have a very strong stock market. Uh, for the IPO, for many years, actually, we were number one uh, around the world, bigger than London, bigger than New York. So actually, this will give you a very good perspective of that, the different kind of service offering that we are, all, uh, we, we, we are able to give. Uh, the one way we put it is that Greater Bay Area, uh, you could see that as a uh, combination of Silicon Valley and also New York. 
of course, uh, right now we are not there yet. That's why I'm here talking about it. Um, and uh, but then the potential really is very high. Um, and um, also for this comparison, you will be wondering uh, why is this Bay Area so different from the others? Now, uh, for the Bay Areas around the world, most of them they actually is a only very loose concept. It's just grouping of cities and an area together and there is no formal cooperation among them. So actually there are of course cooperation, but then there are more competition. But then for this one, actually there's a framework being signed among these 11 cities. So it means that uh, we are all working together, especially for the nine mainland cities, uh, because um, this framework agreement was actually witnessed and supported by the Beijing government. So the, uh, uh, all the cities are actually working together and the blueprint actually it was only announced earlier um, this week. So there will be a lot of details in it. Um, and another uh, characteristic of um, this um, Great Bay Area is that for all the other three Bay Areas is one country, one system, whereas our Bay Area actually is one country, three systems, because it's the mainland system, Hong Kong system, and Macau system. Um, so it's one country, um, um, and then it's got also three different duty zones and also three different currencies. So it means that there are a lot of possibility that you can pick um, the system you like. If you're in Europe, uh, you are more familiar with, for example, Portuguese system, there's Macau. If you have been doing business in uh, mainland China and actually you know the system very well, you can pick China and it's very close to the market. Or if you're familiar with the British system, then you've got uh, the Hong Kong system. So actually, um, but eventually I think the thing is that um, this greater Bay area, you can see that as kind of like a test bed for uh, mainland to liberalize. Because um, uh, if you look at, for example, the Chinese Yuan, renminbi, actually that has been um, uh, used at Hong Kong as a testing ground for liberal liberalization. Now Hong Kong has the biggest renminbi pool and also Hong Kong actually we have the biggest, um, we are the biggest renminbi offshore center. Further down the road, you'll be seeing that you may start to need to look at the fluctuation of renminbi because, you know, as it liberalized, there will be fluctuations and how to arbitrage it. Um, and uh, Hong Kong would have the uh, very diversified pr uh, 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 products um, to actually to hedge your currency risk. Now, um, the last slide actually is the, on the policy address uh, last year uh, on what Hong Kong government is going to do about the maritime industry. Uh, for the past um, some years, actually, there were difficulties of um, raising funds for, um, for, to buy ships. Um, now, uh, we would like, of course, uh, ship financing is strong in Hong Kong, uh, but we would also like to support the uh, ship uh, leasing. We've got very good uh, success in a tax regime for aircraft leasing, so we are using that as a benchmark uh, for the uh, ship leasing. Uh, so we have a work group um, looking at that right now, and we hope that we will be able to offer some tax uh, uh, concession or uh, uh, incentives to the uh, ship less source so that they will be able to not only put in the SPV in Hong Kong, but also actually having the um, ship leasing activity and management over there in Hong Kong. Marine insurance um, tax uh, concession for that is a done deal. Uh, we will be reducing the tax from 16.5% on profits to 8.25% um, uh, for marine insurance in Hong Kong. And then of course, um, uh, this bill resolution, actually we've got a very, some, some very good in heritage uh, from the British system. Uh, especially on the marine uh, 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 dispute resolution and arbitration. So we are working very hard on that uh, in terms of training, uh, lawyers, arbitrators, and also we are going to um, have a separate arbitration group. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, have it uh, spinned off from the International Arbitration Center so that it, they it will be having a, a, a specific independent status uh, in, in terms of arbitration. And then training of talents. Uh, talents, one last word actually is uh, for um, Hong Kong, uh, uh, of course, we have a very strong tradition of maritime shipping industry. Uh, right now, actually, we are also receiving a lot of talents from mainland China, from the uh, Danian Maritime University, Shanghai Maritime University. Um, those talents are actually very uh, uh, comprehensively trained. Um, and also, they know the mainland network very well, a lot of very good connection. Uh, so actually they are bringing in a new um, elements to the uh, Hong Kong maritime uh, community. So I think this is um, some very important things for you to know. Um, we are the Hong Kong government, so uh, we do not charge off for our services. 
Um, of course, uh, for me, I, uh, I am responsible for the maritime sector. And then we also have a colleague here uh, from Brussels office, uh, Paula. And, and she actually is, uh, she covers uh, a few different in, uh, countries. And uh, Greece actually is also in her portfolio. So um, it's a very short presentation. I tried to make it in time, but actually I think I overran a little bit. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, uh, talk to me. Thank you.